Hi everyone, this is Hibba from My Little Journal and today I'm really excited to do a flip through of my January 2021 Traveler's Notebook. I finished January and February and I'm almost done with March and hopefully I'll share February very soon. But so this video isn't too long, I decided to just share January today. But I usually, I wanted to talk about the album I have my Traveler's Notebooks in. I have been using these since 2020 and I get them from Studio Calco. I will have the link down in the description box for you. If they are sold out, I always recommend to click the notify me button because once they come in, they will notify you. And it's a great way for Studio Calico to know how many people are interested in these albums and they'll bring them back in. But anyways, I love these, especially that you can see the beautiful covers of my Traveler's Notebooks. And that's why I've been really, really enjoying these. And I do add a little Studio Calico label with the dates. So I'll just stamp uh, 2021 January through March because I have been able to add at least three Traveler's Notebooks in here. So let's pull this out. This is a really cool system, really simple. Actually, this system is like a Midori style little album. So they're really cool. You just pull this out and you can take out your Traveler's Notebook, slide this back in, and you can add as many as you want. There's five of these little metal bars, but I my Traveler's Notebooks get really chunky, so I can usually add three to four in here. Uh, I have not had luck with four, but if your traveler's notebooks are not as thick as mine or bulky, you could probably add four. But anyways, let's start. This is January, 2021. I think this is journal number 50. I like to um, stamp the journal number. So this journal number is 50. So I've created more than 50 traveler's notebooks. I use Everyday Explorers to add these stamps, the traveler's notebook stamp and the number stamp. Uh, I will link them down in the description box for you because I had had a lot of people ask me about the traveler's notebook stamp. It's a really cute stamp set all about journaling and uh, writing and things like that. So I love that stamp set and I like to add those on my traveler's notebook. But let's get started and we're going to start with this first spread over here. Um, as you guys know, I'm a huge foodie. I love food and I document food all the time. Uh, I know this is probably boring for a lot of people, but I find it very interesting to see what I've been eating and what I've been enjoying throughout the month. So this is one of my favorite breakfasts. It's literally my Middle Eastern Arabic breakfast, Arabic bread, olives from Jordan, and then Lebanon which is a Middle Eastern kind of yogurt. And I really, really enjoyed this breakfast. So I kind of journaled about it. Um, and then I used Everyday Explorer stamp set here. I think this is the cooking stamp set, if I'm not mistaken. Created a pattern at the top, a pattern at the bottom, keeping it very simple, adding some stickers here and there. And I believe um, these stickers are probably Feed Your Craft. Documenting my Reading with Hibba book club. If you guys are not a part of my book club, I recommend you join in. It's so much fun. I choose a book or I choose two books a month and then let my Instagram book club followers decide on which book we're going to read next. The book is chosen and once a month we do a meetup discussion and we talk about the book. It's so much fun. I love it. And this is um, January meetup. It was so much fun. I do have like free printables on my Instagram. And if you want to follow me there, it's at reading with Hibba. You can download those stickers. Kept it really simple. I just stamped out reading with Hibba. This is a stamp set from Everyday Explorers this as well and I used the tag to add a little bit of journaling and just added some stickers and my little reading with Hibba sticker there as well and called it done. In January this is when my son had to move back into the dorm after you know the winter break so I was documenting that and I love this grid that was a part of the traveler's notebook what I did was I used some of the boxes to add some journaling and then used my Studio Calico kit to add this, like the stickers and then Shine and UGA and U, things like this. This is, I think, the Color Theory kit. It came with alphas. Really had fun with this. And I always recommend this. Like if you don't know where to start with Traveler's Notebooks or you just want to catch up, stick to a kit. It really helps like 
decide for you what you use and you're not wasting time looking through your own stash. So I do that plenty and you'll probably see a lot of spreads on my YouTube channel and in my flip throughs where I do just kits only. Um, I was documenting my daughter getting a new guitar and, you know, keeping it simple. I've already documented this in a different project, so I didn't feel like I had to journal about it or add anything else. So I literally just used the pattern on the traveler's notebook and it said weekend adventures and one of them said shopping. So I circled the shopping, added a few stickers and called it done. When I see a guitar in my traveler's notebook, I'm not going to wonder who bought a guitar. I know it's my daughter. She's her guitar player. So in the end, I didn't feel like I had to journal. And again, because I documented it in a different project, I was okay with not adding any journaling. Um, I do have a process video for this one where I'm documenting all about Stitch and him getting grooming and all that good stuff and a new haircut. So what I did was a half a flip or the or a half a fold, let's say. Um, I didn't feel like I needed a lot of space, so I didn't do a full four by eight fold and kept it very small where I can add this little extra photo of Stitch with his little bandana. He looked like a little cowboy. Added my journaling. This stamp set is from Everyday Explorers. I think it's the Dog Mom stamp set. And I use that stamp set to add the paw prints, a few little stamping here and there, the bone. Love the stamp set. Again, I say this all the time. You really don't have to overthink it when creating. Just creating a little tiny fold with an extra photo. And it just adds that uh, interactive element and that interest to your spread. And it looks like you really worked hard on it when really you didn't. So these are really one of my favorite kind of spreads to create. Okay, guys, let's move on to this next spread. Now, um, for this spread, I did not share this, by the way, because I just didn't want offensive comments and rude comments and things like that. But you know what? This is America, and we can say what we want, and we can share what we want. And what happened in the Capitol in January was so wrong and not acceptable, and I really wanted to document it. But keeping it simple, I just wanted to add a journaling card. I wanted to do a bit of stamping. And actually, I also added a screenshot of the news as well. And I used this card that says Stop the Count and this card to create a little pocket for myself. So all I did with my pocket, I used a glassine bag and then covered the front with this three by four card that I trimmed down, used a circle punch to stamp out a half a circle. I also, these are all, by the way, Kelly Perky slash paper person shop kits and stamps. And I used the stamp to stamp out goodbye <laughs> with the middle finger and then a few like nasty words down here, stamped this is America and called it done. I know this is probably offensive to a lot of people because there is curse words and there's like things that uh, basically some people don't agree with me on. But uh, this was something that really angered me and I wanted to document it. And this is how I felt at the moment when I was documenting this. So it all worked out pretty well. So um, as you can see, I love documenting Stitch because he's so adorable and he's growing. And I can't believe how much he's grown since January. Keeping this simple, I think I did this in a live. I stamped out Stitch. I added a few photos of him, just kind of creating this little cluster of photos in stamping. And I used some wood veneers, which I should be using more often. And I just love the spread, just the splashes here. I love that stamp set. I think this might have been Feed Your Crafts or Carrie Bradford's because I have two splatter stamp sets and I love using it to add a little color here and there. Again, documenting Stitch. Uh, this is a favorite. I got Stitch a Puppuccino when we stopped at Starbucks and he was in love. So I did a strip of photos, added some journaling and stamped out Puppuccino. I believe I used close to my heart stamp sets and ink pads. This was so much fun to put together. And I just love how excited he was over whipped cream. He was just so cute and so excited about it. So it had to be documented. So I always recommend this to document yourself, journal about you. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't have to be a full page of journaling. Maybe it could be just tidbits of what you're enjoying at the moment. 
But every once in a while, I do like to add a photo of myself and a little bit about myself. And I used, I believe, Studio Calico kit again here and probably stuck to my kit only. And then I stamped Shine On. This is a stamp set um, from Studio Calico as well. And just kept it really simple. I focused on my photo. I also focused on my journaling. And I just love how it turned out. Love the blue with the pink. It matched my photo really well. I do have a process video for this one. Um, my good friend Elise sent me this adorable frame. And if you guys are uh, familiar with the show Friends, you know where this came from. And she knows how much I love the show Friends. So she sent that to me for my birthday. And I just added some journaling about it, created these little clusters. I did use Feed Your Craft Kit for this, which is fitting because Elise is the owner of Feed Your Craft. So it was fun to put this together with her own kit and I love how it turned out. Very colorful and bright. So in January, we had snow days that <laughs> you guys know. I live in Georgia, so snow days aren't really big here. So what I decided to do was just use my small three by eight photo and add it like almost on both sides of my spread so I can have space to stamp snow day and keep the love this. So if I added it on one side, I would either cover the love this, which I didn't want to do. I really wanted to use that. And like having it like right there in the center, it gave me space for a title. So I really like to play around my, with my photos. Don't feel like just because your photo is a certain size, you have to stick to one side of your spread. Try to work it into your titles or your patterns so you don't lose those patterns and titles. documenting what I have been watching in January. And you see, if I didn't document this, I would have forgotten that I watched these, by the way, in January. So I love these types of spreads because really you tend to forget what you watch or what you ate or what you were listening to at the moment. So I really enjoy these. Again, if you've been on my channel, you know my love for Studio Calico's TV stamp set. I love their TV stamp set. I always trim it out, trim out the center and back up my photos with it. And it's a perfect size, just added my ratings. And this was a part of the Traveler's Notebook, so it said my favorite right now. And I just used a brush stamp set to stamp shows and movies. I think I even went over shows and movies because when I used that ink, it covered most of it or it didn't like pop enough. So I just went over it with a pen. So in January, my son hit the side of my car in the garage while he was parking it in the garage first time and I was kind of shocked honestly so what I did was I printed the photos from the aftermath and I created a little pocket here for myself with again a glassine bag and I used a card to stamp where should we go today and then I added nowhere <laughs> and I kind of trimmed the card in half just to add more interest and added a word sticker in the center. I kind of had fun with this. I also used some stamps from the paper person shop. Uh, these are great stamps for moments like these and I created a little background stamping as well for my card. I, I could swear I journaled. What do I have feeling? I journaled and the card isn't here. Okay you guys that's a problem. Because I remember journaling. Maybe I forgot to put the card back. Now I have to go fetching and looking for the card. But anyways, um, once I find it, I will add it to my little pocket here. But just adding a little bit of journaling about what happened, stamping, all that good stuff. And it's really something I recommend. Just have fun with it. You know, don't overthink it. Just use your stamps, cards, create little pockets. Believe me, you'll enjoy it more. Next up is this really fun spread that I created using some Spellbinders products. So Spellbinders had these horoscopes plates for your hot foil machine, and I love them. I used it to add the Aquarius and the dates and then the admired, friendly, loyal. And I love how it turned out. I also used their moon stencil to create the moon. I think I just used my ink pads in my blender and I went through the stencil to create the moon. It's so pretty. I also used some Studio Calico Alpha stamps. Because I foiled everything in gold, I went with the gold alphas from the color theory 
kit and it turned out so pretty. Everything matches so nicely. This pattern was a part of the Traveler's Notebook. Love it. Keeping it simple again, just using my hot foil machine, a few stickers and calling it done. Because I did like journal and talk about me turning 44 in January already on the spread, I didn't feel like I had to repeat myself kind of. So I was good with that, but I really wanted to use that kit and the plates and all that good stuff. So that's why I created this one without any journaling. And as you can see, I finished my traveler's notebook. I ended up probably, I can't even remember how many, maybe 15 spreads in this one. Uh, not as many as I usually do have, or maybe there was 12. I'm going to count them real quick. Okay, I have 14 spreads in this traveler's notebook. And that's okay because I worked on my Me, Myself, and I project and I documented all the things in that project in January. So it's okay if my like traveler's notebooks for January is not full. And what I mean about that is like, I think I have a few spreads in here. Yeah, like one, two, two spreads that I did not work on. Yeah, so two spreads. So I'm okay with having empty pages in my traveler's notebook. It's not a big deal, you guys. I know a lot of people contact me and say, oh, I hate it that my traveler's no notebook is not full and how can I fill it? And it's not about filling everything to the brim. Just create and have fun. And if you don't have any more stories to document, that's fine. You're done. I call it done even if I have four pages in my traveler's notebook that are empty and not full, right? Or I didn't work on. So just go with it. Have fun with it. I really enjoy working in my traveler's notebook and I never look at I have to fill every single page. I just create and have fun. Anyways, you guys, I'm going to call this done. I'm going to be adding all the links down in the description box for you. Whatever I find is still available. I will link it for you. I hope you enjoyed watching this flip through and if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye.